This case involves the concepts of employer-employee relationship and piercing the veil of corporate fiction. This all go on the first Cyber 1 PH Inc. Leah Jane and Stephanie alleged that they were hired on March 3, 2008 and April 5, 2008 respectively by Cyber 1 Proprietary Limited Company or Cyber 1 AU, an Australian company as part-time home-based remote customer service representatives. They became full-time and permanent employees of Cyber 1 AU and were eventually promoted as its supervisors. Leah Jane and Stephanie narrated the following events. Sometime in October 2009, Mache, the chief executive officer of Cyber One AU, asked them, together with a certain Benjamin, to become dummy directors and or incorporators of Cyber One PH. When Leah Jane and Stephanie agreed, they were promoted as managers and were given increases in their salaries. The salary increases were made to appear as paid for by Cyber One PH. However, in the payroll for November 16 to 30, 2010, Mache reduced the salaries of Leah Jane and Stephanie from 50,000 pesos to 36,000 pesos, of which 26,000 pesos was paid by Cyber One AU, while the remaining 10,000 pesos was paid by Cyber One PH. Aside from the decrease in their salaries, Leah Jane and Stephanie were only given 20,000 pesos each as 13-month pay for the year 2010. Sometime in March 2011, Mache made Leah Jane and Stephanie choose one from three options. A. To take an indefinite furlough and be placed in a manpower pool to be recalled in case there is an available position. B. To stay with Cyber One AU but with an entry-level position as home-based customer service representatives. Or C. To tender their irrevocable resignation. Leigh Jane and Stephanie mentioned that they were constrained to pick the first option in order to save their jobs. In April 2011, Leigh Jane and Stephanie received 13,000 pesos each as their last salary. Hence, Leah Jane and Stephanie filed a case against Cyber One PH and Cyber One AU for illegal dismissal. They likewise claimed for non payment or underpayment of their salaries in 13 month pay, moral and exemplary damages, and attorney's fees. On the other hand, Cyber One PH denied the existence of an employer employee relationship between it and Leah Jane and Stephanie. Cyber One PH insisted that Leah Jane and Stephanie were its incorporators or directors and not its regular employees. It also claimed that Leah Jane and Stephanie were employees of Cyber One AU, over which the Office of the Labor Arbiter had no jurisdiction because it is a foreign corporation not doing business in the Philippines. The Office of the Labor Arbiter held that Leah Jane and Stephanie were not employees of Cyber One PH, as the latter did not exercise control over them. Said office did not find evidence showing that Cyber One PH and Cyber One AU were one and the same entity. Thus, it upheld the presumption that the companies had personalities separate and distinct from one another. The Office of the Labor Arbiter ruled that Leia, Jane, and Stephanie were merely shareholders or directors of Cyber One PH and not its regular employees. Finally, the Office of the Labor Arbiter found that since Cyber One AU was a foreign corporation not doing business in the Philippines, then it had no jurisdiction over it. Hence, the Office of the Labor Arbiter dismissed the complaint of Leia, Jane, and Stephanie. The National Labor Relations Commission reversed and set aside the ruling of the Office of the Labor Arbiter. The Commission ruled that Leah Jane and Stephanie were employees of Cyber One AU and Cyber One PH since their role as nominal shareholders of Cyber One PH did not preclude them from being employees of Cyber One PH. Moreover, the Commission noted that Cyber One PH paid Leah Jane and Stephanie their monthly salary and allowance, but such company was unable to present any proof that Leah Jane and Stephanie were paid their director's fee. The Commission also noted that Cyber One AU previously paid the salaries of Leah Jane and Stephanie, including allowances. In addition, the Commission noted that the furlough notifications issued by Cyber One AU to Leah Jane and Stephanie were, in fact, notices of dismissal. Leah Jane and Stephanie were informed that Cyber One AU was unable to provide them with work, but that it may engage their services again in the future. The Commission declared that Leah Jane and Stephanie were dismissed from employment without valid cause and due process. Lastly, due to its perceived participation of Cyber One AU in the management, supervision, and control of Cyber One PH, the Commission ruled that Cyber One AU was doing business in the Philippines. Thus, the Commission applied the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. The Court of Appeals reversed the findings of the National Labor Relations Commission and ruled that no employer employee relationship existed between Leah Jane and Stephanie on the one hand and Cyber One PH on the other. The Court of Appeals then held that the National Labor Relations Commission misapplied the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil and concluded that Cyber One AU and Cyber One PH were two distinct and separate entities. Leah Jane and Stephanie elevated their case to the Supreme Court. Were Leah Jane and Stephanie employees of Cyber One PH and Cyber One AU? The Supreme Court ruled that Leah Jane and Stephanie were employees of Cyber One AU and not of Cyber One PH. 
First, records showed that Leia Jane and Stephanie were hired as home-based customer service representatives of Cyber One AU, a corporation organized and existing under the laws of Australia, and that they were notified by Cyber One AU of their dismissal through furlough notifications. Second, Although the court found that jurisdiction was acquired over Cyber One TH for having been validly served with summons, jurisdiction over Cyber One AU, a foreign corporation, was not acquired as there was no valid service of summons to it in accordance with the rules of court and there was no showing that it voluntarily appeared in court. For the Supreme Court, no judgment could be issued against Cyber One AU, if any, and such judgment would only bind Cyber One TH. And third, the court found no reason to apply the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. Jurisprudence teaches, that the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil applies only in three basic instances, namely a. When the separate, distinct corporate personality defeats public convenience, as when the corporate fiction is used as a vehicle for evasion of an existing obligation. b. In fraud cases, or when the corporate entity is used to justify a wrong, protect a fraud, or defend a crime. or c. Is used in alter ego cases, that is, where a corporation is essentially a farce, since it is a mere alter ego, or where the corporation is so organized and controlled and its affairs conducted as to make it merely an instrumentality, agency, or adjunct of another corporation. In the present case, Cyber One AU was not shown to have conducted business in the Philippines through its local subsidiary, Cyber One PH. Neither was Cyber One AU shown to have appointed and authorized Cyber One PH to act in its behalf in the Philippines. The court thus classified Cyber One AU instead as a non-resident corporation not doing business in the Philippines. Moreover, the court noticed Leah Jane and Stephanie's failure to prove that Cyber One AU, acting as the managing director of both corporations, had absolute control over Cyber One PH. The court added that even granting that Cyber One AU exercised a certain degree of control over the finances, policies, and practices of Cyber One PH, such control did not necessarily warrant piercing the veil of corporate fiction since there was not a single proof that Cyber One PH was formed to defraud Leia Jane and Stephanie or that Cyber One PH was guilty of bad faith or fraud. Significantly, the court did not find any evidence proving that Cyber One PH was organized for the purpose of defeating public convenience or evading an existing obligation. The court stated that Leia Jane and Stephanie even failed to allege any fraudulent acts committed by Cyber One PH in order to justify a wrong, protect a fraud, or defend a crime. The court also stated that the mere fact that Cyber One PH's major stockholder was Cyber One AU did not prove that Cyber One PH was organized and controlled and its affairs conducted in a manner that made it merely an instrumentality, agency, or adjunct of Cyber One AU. The court emphasized that in order to disregard the separate corporate personality of a corporation, the wrongdoing must be clearly and convincingly established. As mentioned, the court declared that Leia, Jane, and Stephanie were not employees of Cyber One PH. The court used the fourfold test in determining the existence of an employer-employee relationship. It stated that the test involves an inquiry into a. the selection and engagement of the employee, b. the payment of wages, c. the power of dismissal, and d. the employer's power to control the employee with respect to the means and method by which the work is to be accomplished. In the present case, the court noted the allegation of Leia Jane and Stephanie that they were requested by Cyber One AU to become stockholders and directors of Cyber One PH and that they were hired as employees of Cyber One PH as shown by their payslips. However, the court ruled that other than the payslips, no other evidence was submitted to prove their employment by Cyber One PH. Leia Jane and Stephanie failed to present any evidence, such as employment contracts or job offers, that they rendered services to Cyber One PH as employees in their own. As to the power of dismissal, the court found that Leia Jane and Stephanie submitted letters of resignation as directors of Cyber One PH and not as employees their own. Said the court, this fact negated their contention that they were dismissed by Cyber One PH as its employees. Lastly, the court found no evidence that Cyber One PH exercised the power of control over Leia Jane and Stephanie on the manner by which they performed their work. The court highlighted that Leia Jane and Stephanie merely relied on their allegations without specifying the terms of their employment as well as their functions and duties as employees of Cyber One PH. Were Leia Jane and Stephanie illegally dismissed from employment? The court ruled in the negative. As record established the fact that Leia Jane and Stephanie were not employees of Cyber One PH, the court found no need to delve into the issues of illegal dismissal and entitlement to their claims. The court concluded that there was no dismissal to speak of.